This is the NCPA Championships of Matty Marshall alongside Todd Martinez. And we are about to watch the West Point Black Knights take on the University of Central Florida Knights. And this should be a good one. There's Daughtry. Daughtry balled it up for, uh, for Central Florida. Played great in the snake. That kid can play some paintball. And uh, West Point, man, they worked really hard to get here. West Point defeated Akron this morning in a pretty solid game. And uh, they earned the right to play in uh, against the uh, Central Florida Knights. Todd, what do you think about this matchup here? I mean, West Point had a, a lot better game this morning than they did yesterday. But, I mean, I really like the way UCF is playing. So, you know, ECF took charge of that snake yesterday, really got up there, did some work, attacking the center of the field right away. Oh, getting shot, though, on the way up there. And losing. They just lost that one body. Oh, no, losing a gun battle right now off that snake side. So Army losing a body out of the middle as well. Army coach, you know, the Army coach is really doing a good job of getting his players over here. You know, Washington uh, on the snake side as Army loses another body trying to bump up. But Gorak, you know, in the 50 snake over here for Army. Uh, just really getting pounded on, living behind his gun in that Dorito side can is that UCF player, but running down, bunkering out that 50 Dorito. Uh, Army goes and gets a UCF player. So there's another trade on that side of the field. This might be a one-on-one -on -one all of a sudden right now yes. as two bodies for Army come off that Dorito side and one comes walking off the field for UCF. Yes, this is now a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, so Gork in the snake right now for West Point. And I think I don't know, I can't, I can't really determine who has better field position. I think that actually uh, Central Florida might have better field position because that whole D side, but Gorick is by the flag. And so if Gorick were to be able to jump in, grab the flag, maybe get back to his position, and then push the player from Central Florida towards that D side, he might be able, uh, might be able to actually uh, shift the field and hang the flag without having to actually shoot the opponent out. Oh, but it doesn't matter. Gork gets Cyclops. Just direct driven right to the center part of his goggles. So that's going to be some solid work there. Central Florida, first to strike. Yeah, Central Florida. You know, it looked like Army had the bodies right there, but you know, Central Florida able to pull it out. You know, really in a tough position so over on that Dorito side. Looking at the D side action, the aggressor, uh, West Point, man, they have definitely been first to strike many, many times. There's Odell, he gets taken out. Yeah, that so. was a, he was lucky to trade out on that spot right there. Looked like the Army player had the drop on him. You know, and that was the difference. And there was Gork taking that one-on-one -on -one loss. There's a uh, John Senior right there. That's the owner of Central Florida Paintball, coaching for his boys here, the local kids from the University of Central Florida. That's so cool to see the generations and, uh, you know, paintball is very much about the patrons of the sport, the guys that run companies, guys that run fields, team owners, people that are really committed to bringing up young players and you know, really help spread that paintball gospel, man. And because uh, it's such a fun thing, it's such a personal test. And that's that's basically the uh, you know that's why you play the game. You know, it, it's a it's a test. You there's there's so many different elements. It's a physical thing. It's a it's very much a mental thing. Um, and there's so many different skill sets that you need to slowly but surely work on to mature your game. Yeah, I mean, what do you say? Uh, lifetime to lifetime to master. Minute to learn. Lifetime to master. Simple principle. That one. Everybody's got guns. There's a flag in the center. Shoot everyone on the other team. Hang the flag. Well, pretty pretty basic game. It's like, I mean, I, it's not anything like golf, but golf's simple too. There's a little tiny ball on the tee in a hole 300 yards away. Put the ball in the hole. And you got a bunch of clubs that do it. But if anyone that's ever played either game, you know that there's so many intricacies, so many different things you got to think about. And uh, But the mental headspace that paintball, particularly competitive paintball, puts you in, it's a very fertile ground for, uh, I've seen so many guys grow up really strong adults coming up in the sport of paintball. But parents out there watching, don't be afraid to let your kids play competitive paintball. It'll be a great life lesson to them. And all, so all these guys come to these tournaments for it. It'll be a great adventure. So here we go on this next point. It's, Looks like Army losing some bodies. I think they already lost two. And now Central Florida, I think actually only one has dropped from Army. So, so 
Central Florida's lost one. Army has lost one as well, too. It looks like you know, one for the US, uh, UCF Knights, and West Point has now lost three, so it's not looking good. Looks like Gorick uh, going to be left on an island over here yeah, on the snake side. All that needs to happen is for this UCF player to go bunker him out. He comes up high. Oh, nice shot. Came up high on the inside. That was Wells and uh, shot Gorick right in the face. So that's <laughs> poor Gorick has been uh, has has had his goggles shot direct drove twice might need to uh, get a new fresh set of lenses after this past first two points you know these uh, goggles actually super safe out there you know when people first get involved in paintball like is it safe you know i mean goggles are they are they strong yeah i mean honestly the manufacturers in order to test the goggles um they shoot steel pellets at them um you know around 400 feet per second and uh, i mean if it could take a steel pellet you know John Gregory, who used to own JT back in the day, used to call it the shotgun test. He literally, they'd have a new set of goggles. He'd take a 12-gauge shotgun out in the back, put it on a tree stump, and shoot it. And if it could stop a 12-gauge shotgun, it could stop a paintball. So anyway, seven minutes left to go. Uh, UCF Knights in the lead, 2-0. to zero. We'll be right back after this. West Point needs to get something going here. As, uh, you know, they've had some aggression. That, that first point was good. I mean, they were on the attack, which they've been all tournament long. However, uh, lost too many bodies here in gunfights in that last point. So Central Florida Knights looking pretty solid right now. Come yeah, on. Central Florida did a good job of uh, isolating that snake side corner on the break of Army. You know, really left their snake eye out to dry. He really couldn't do any work because there was two guns on him. And then they slowly worked out that Dorito side before finally coming in and uh, getting that last body off the Dorito side or off the snake side of Army. So UCF, what I like about UCF is we, we see a lot of different looks from them, you know, varying up their game plans, uh, throwing a lot of different scenarios uh, at Army for them to deal with. So Army looks like they're going to go three hard to the Dorito side again. Army all the way to the snake, UCF. All bodies out alive. Two of them here on the snake side. One up the middle, two on the Dorito side. Army loses two more bodies off the Dorito side. That's going to send UCF launching up to the 15 Dorito. Making their bumps across the Dorito side. And now, right up here, again, in that 50 snake. Saw a lot yesterday. Central Florida, you know, <laughs> Zachary Daughtry. Yeah, that kid's a ball player. Yeah, we saw him yesterday get shut down a little bit early, kept fighting, and then came back and, you know, put a string of points one after another up in this 50 snake and really just went to work for UCF. Well, look, there's Daughtry on the replay. Look at that, eyes up and looking at the lanes. That's the pro move right there. If you're able to run out to your bunker looking at the incoming streams, that's, that's, the, that's what you want to do. That's next level. Uh, because what you're able to do then is you can see the paintballs coming at you, and so you can dive away. Paintballs come about 200 miles an hour, and anyone you that's actually a drill you can do. You know, go to the other side of the field and just start shooting paintballs at each other and try to dodge them, call dodgeball. And if you can play that game of dodgeball, do that in drills, you'll get used to seeing that incoming paint, and literally you develop like ninja reflexes and the ability to dodge paint. And if then when you can get to the next level where you're running out to your bunker looking at the incoming streams, it definitely can help out. So it looks like timeout has been called by West Point. That's a good timeout, because uh, Central Florida has just been putting, uh, putting some points up on the board here. So we will take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back after this, 6.19 to go.
So teams starting to get knocked out, standing around watching all their friends on the opposing teams. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, homegrown fans here because this is Central Florida's home field. The owner of this field is actually out there coaching for Central Florida right now. And, uh, but that's still always the vibe at Central Florida. I love coming down here. Great people own this place. A lot of awesome teams play here. Actually have infamous and damage from the PSP getting ready for the next one. Next PSP event's coming at you May 2nd to the 4th at OFC Paintball Park in Chesapeake City, Maryland. And uh, we'll have all the action coming at you at paintballaccess.com. Um, should be a crazy one too. The first event was insane. So there's the owner of the field actually here at Central Florida Paintball. Always such a great patron of the sport. And uh, if you live in the Central Florida area, Definitely want to get out and check this field out. It is the hotbed of paintball in this part of the world. Todd, you've done tons of practices out here over the yeah, years. Yeah, I've been out here so many times for so many different events. You know, every time we come down to World Cup, too, you know, every team, you'll, you, you come here a week before World Cup, and every pro team is down here practicing on four different it's fields. It's like a mini uh, pro World Cup in and of itself down here with no refs. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets crazy. So here we go on the breakout. West Point, they got to get it going right here. They really need to start putting some points on the board and stop the momentum from Central Florida Knights. And now minor penalty thrown on Central Florida on the uh, Dorito side. And Army still with three bodies left alive. Make that two as one gets shot diving across into the 40 Dorito. Only the center tower and the snake side corner left from Army trying to fight UCF. Up three points right now. Up bodies. Uh, UCF with two bodies in the box right now. Oh, look at this crazy move right here. Wells. Yeah, that's a very unconventional move from Wells. It didn't pay off for him. He ended up paying with about five welts on his back. But I just like the aggression from Wells. And uh, this is the chance, though, maybe for West Point. And can they get this point here? Huge move down the D side of the field. It pays dividends. Wow. Able to stay alive during it. And nice work by West Point clearing out that D side of the field. Can't believe he got away with that. Get the flag, Get the flag. But <laughs> it was uh, Kyle Gorick over there. Or somebody using Kyle Gorick's Watch the box. Watch the box. Oh, now they're looking at the box and gonna hang it up, so. Uh, but regardless, that minor penalty will come off the board for Central Florida. Let's check out the replay here. Look at this huge move uh, coming up there. And the, or actually, this is the penalty replay on the D side of the field. So you saw that yellow flag get thrown in the air by the referee, and here's this move by West Point. Look, he comes on the loop, big rundown. What a beautiful move, man. He went out so wide that the opposition had no clue what he was doing. That was, that was a great move. That's one of the better moves I've seen on the D side. A little rope-a-dope there. Yeah, I can't believe he got away with that. He did the loop-de-loop -loop all the way down to the tape line and then straight down. Well, did you see that his, his opponent, I mean, he put his opponent in, went all the way out wide, and then by the time his opponent came back out for the next engagement of the gunfight, he'd already cleared that next D side uh, bunker, which blocked him out. Yeah, so there's our sideline reporter. Amy Campbell. Get a little interview in with Ramsey over there from FAU. You know, Ramsey was doing work, man. I'll tell you what, he definitely uh, played a big part helping his team advance on. You know, they will be playing tomorrow. You know, what other teams, you know, four teams gonna make it on to tomorrow. Who's it gonna be? So far we got FAU with their win over Kennesaw State. This game right now, UCF taking on Army, who wants to get that next spot. Yeah, so far advancing Temple. Temple, Florida Atlantic advances. Then, uh, you know, we're gonna see the next year, UCF taking on Army, UConn taking on Fresno State. Who's it gonna be? Three this way, three this way. So here we go, start of the next point. Heavy guns up on the snake side for UCF. As they make it out, but they do lose a body out of that pin. Army losing a body out of that Dorito side corner. Army able to make it to the temple and the, the, tree, the snake side corner. Make it a four on three right now as UCF loses another body off that Dorito side. But in control of the snake, 
This is where you want to be if you're UCF, just giving it a second. Has the opportunity, listening to his coach. The Army just feeling the attack coming from that burrito side. Yeah, body starting to peel off for them. Another one comes off the D side too. Here comes a big save move again. Is he able to do it two times in a row? I think he might have traded out with them. Yeah, but that UCF player was doing work over there all alone on island and shoots both bodies off the Dorito side, creating a two-on-one opportunity and shooting one body off the snake side. So he got at least three kills in this point as Army had the body advantage. And whoever that was over there on the snake side, or on the Dorito side, UCF went to work, got himself three kills. Snake corner only, Ross! And uh, who that is once he's over here now, it's a two-on-one, 50 snake and snake side corner. We got Daughtry. And I believe that's Wells as Daughtry widens the field, gets all the way over to the Dorito side. And Daughtry is fast. Yeah, Daughtry's making moves. He's on you, Zach! He's got that aerodynamic body. <laughs> yeah, Daughtry not carrying a lot of extra weight around. Right? There's Daughtry on your screen right there, helping finish that point out. Got past the 50 yard line, so solid work cross field uh, as uh, Central Florida putting in what they needed to do in order to put another point on the board. So West Point was putting up a fight for a little bit. They were uh, making some aggressive moves on the D side, but with three minutes and eight seconds to play here in the first half, four to one is the score. Let's check out this replay. Yeah, that's Odell right there, Bradley Odell. He's gonna get that kill. They're gonna trade out, asking uh, for the to, to save his life over there. But Odell, it was a one on two on that side. There was one body, you know, you see the last body that came running. He was in the can. There was another body in that mini Dorito. Odell comes up the field, shoots the guy out of the snake side temple, shoots the guy out of the mini Dorito, and then uh, trades out there at that last, uh, that last body that we just saw in the replay. So three pack right there for Odell. UCF Knights with a 4-1 lead over West Point. We'll be right back after this. The Empire Elite Vanquish comes with a pressure balanced spool valve, a precision sensor for on-screen readout with no gauge, an OLED display with super bright 2000 to 1 contrast ratio, push button bolt removal for quick maintenance, and a super freak barrel kit with five inserts. More information about this marker is available on the product page at empirepaintball.com. Thirty-three seconds to go before the start of this next point. Four to one is the score. Three oh eight remains. West Point losing to the Central Florida Knights, and uh, but it's been an exciting game. Central Florida, though, they really know their shots and they really know what moves to make to get to those fifties. But they're playing good counterpunch paintball. West Point's definitely on the attack, uh, but but they're taking everything that West Point's giving them and then putting it right back on them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, UCF just wearing those punches, and then, like you said, just coming right back at it, getting big plays out of their big players right there. Odell, Daughtry, as West Point makes it out to the Dorito corner. Yep, makes it out there alive. Three bodies on the Dorito side, two bodies on the snake side. UCF, the first one to drop a body off that Dorito side, but also gets out two bodies on the snake side, one in the snake side corner, one to the snake side mini race, who just jumps now into the snake, is gonna crawl all the way up to the 50. Army tries to counter as they get shot diving into the 50, though, unsuccessful. That's gonna leave uh, the door wide open for Wells here in the 50 snake, who just pops up right away and blows that tower to bits. Army right now in a frenzy over there on the Dorito side, trying to make advances up the field, but lose their two bodies uh, from, I don't, think, I don't think Wells got that shot, and I think those both came from the Dorito side. Well, Wells fighting down the tape line with the back bunker for West Point, and West Point gets taken out. Uh, I think he got shot cross field or heads up from Wells. Couldn't quite tell where that ball broke on it, but he took the walk. So there's another point for uh, the Central Florida Knights. Two minutes and seven seconds to go here. Uh, Central Florida really exerting their dominance on West Point. West Point is fighting, but they just don't have enough right now. Yeah, I mean, losing bodies early, UCF is still fighting back, you know, and this just tells me that, you know, they're just better gun battlers than Army right now, because they're both getting out to their spots, you know, only maybe one body dropping from each side, and UCF just, 
you know, just attacking, making smarter moves, reading the opportunities, uh, seeing the situations happen, and attacking the field right away. So, you know, and it's coming from all sides of the field, up the middle, down that Dorito side. We saw Odell with a couple games, Dodger with a couple games, Wells playing really well. So, up five to one right now with 2.07 left to go in this first half. UCF Knights over West Point. We'll be right back after this. Time's starting to tick down here in the first half. It's been pretty much all Central Florida so far. Uh, West Point is uh, gonna have to just try to maintain right now. I mean, yeah, try to score a point, but they've been trying to do that for eight minutes and um, only been able to put one on the board. So they're gonna have to regroup during the second half here and really try to talk to their coaches and figure out what the Knights are doing, what Central Florida Knights are doing. Um, I mean, it, to me, you know, they're just, they're trying to attack Todd, but uh, they're losing too many bodies, and then when they do attack, they're going, they're not they're not throwing punches and bunches. It's one guy trying to do something by himself. And then now, Knight's also struggling to stay alive on the break. Yeah, and oh, Knight's, again, just getting worn out, out of their bunkers. Another one goes down out of that Dorito side can, just two bodies left alive. You know it's bad when you're just gun battling on both sides of your bunker trying to find bodies. You know, just UCF just really keeping the pressure on. Daughtry again here in the 50 snake. He's gonna come creeping down the field. One body left alive over in that small Dorito. And man, UCF, I mean, I thought Army, you know, played really well this morning, but just getting worn out right now by UCF. Yeah, it's going to be a long second half for them if, uh, if they keep this up. Well, it's coming, to the, it's coming down to where they really need to start. Uh, they really need to start trying to live off the break, you know? And because uh, that's, that's step one, and it's getting down to that. You know, you're seeing them drop bodies on the break, and then you're starting to see the mental frustration set in. When you see these guys get shot out of their bunkers and do this, like, kind of, oh God, what is going on? I don't know what's going on. We're losing bodies. We have no answer for what they're bringing. That's when it gets scary. When you start to see the mental defeat happen, physical defeat's one thing, but when the mental defeat happens, and it happens with still a minute and five seconds in the first half, well, I mean, that's when we could see, you know, another big blowout. Well, remember yesterday, well, let's talk about this morning first. You know, Army came out and put it on Akron. You know, and they looked really fluid. They were hitting shots on the break, you know, and their movements, you know, were good up both sides of the field. But, you know, yesterday they actually played Army and, uh, you know, UCF played Army. And, you know, that game was kind of back and forth in the beginning. And then this is exactly what happened at the end of that game yesterday. And then UCF in the very end ended up coming back and beating Army 13 to five. Yeah, so we're kind of seeing the same sort of thing go down right now. So West Point is being tested. We'll see if they can answer. 105 left in the first half. We'll be right back. Being confident on the field is key in being successful. Every snapshot, every lane, every gun battle, it all matters. Having equipment that allows me to play confident the best of my abilities is huge. The spacing and texture of the Vanquish grips are ideal for handling in every situation. It's a soft shooting, hit every shot you take kind of marker. My name is Drew Templeton, I play for Team Infamous, and the Vanquish takes my game to another level. So West Point, man, they have got to pick it up here, getting beat up by Central Florida so far in this match, 6-1 to one in the score. A lot of game left, though. we got a whole second half to play and a minute left here in the first one. But West Point, they cannot live off the break right now. They keep losing one or two bodies every single point, continuing to play down. They're getting a couple themselves occasionally, but not enough. Now they're starting to chop some bodies up. Two bodies coming off right now for Central Florida. Still three alive for them, but another body drops for West Point. And sure enough, Central Florida is in the snake again here. 
and they have uh, also a back player right behind him. Looking over the shoulder of Wells, who's in the snake. And you know, Todd, what we're seeing from Central Florida is uh, a lot of different players contributing. And that's what you want to see. You know, when you're looking for a team to start making a run in a tournament, if you're getting, you know, five, six guys contributing, you're hearing us call different names, Daughtry, Wells, you know, that's when that's when a, a team gets scary. Yeah, and a two-pack right there running down the, the highway on the Dorito side. UCF player. Who was that? Let's see as he walks over here. That was uh, Mojica. Mojica getting involved. Here he comes. Bam. One, two. Wear it and uh, maintains his life. Here's one of those. That's the army play over here on the snake side. Just wearing two in the goggles, one in the front of the gun. But what a run down the inside for number 77, Brandon Mojica. So it looks like they're gonna burn the rest of that time off the clock. I believe there's only six seconds left here in the first half. So the score going into the second half is gonna be seven to one in favor of a dominant Central Florida. So Central Florida handling business right now. Multiple players stepping up for them. We'll be back with second half action. Stick around. I'll be here till Sunday. Here all week. I told him I said, hey, we 
So after the first half was completed, the score was seven to one in favor of Central Florida Knights. They're putting a beat down on West Point right now. Todd, obviously, I, I did not expect this to be honest. We saw West Point play uh, some good games, uh, and I thought that they were going to learn from the, you know, the shellacking that they took earlier on by Central Florida. And so, you know, I mean, I guess you could have expected this because they played each other before, and there was a high point margin there too. But you know, they put Army put five points on the board in that game, and it was a different story there. Yeah, well, it was a different first half. Yeah. You know, and but uh, it really looks like UCF is the one that made the adjustments and really figured out Army's game plans here uh, all throughout that second half. You know, it wasn't that big of a blowout until the end of the second half. It was really close throughout the first half yesterday, but right now, uh, you know, UCF just outclassing Army all over the field. And Army just really with no answers. Here comes Daughtry. Daughtry is going to execute. Player at the 50, he stays alive, throws another couple streams. Crossfield gets another kill. So Daughtry just handling business over here on the snake side. And nice work. Daughtry's a baller, man. Yeah. Zach Daughtry. You know, I talked to I talked to him actually uh, first day we got here. Came up, very nice guy, uh, very respectful, and um, also real hungry. He was like, look, man, our team, you know, I, I respect all the teams here, but I really feel like we got a strong squad. You know, we're from this. This is our home field. This is our home turf. We're going to defend it. We've been playing against really good players for a long time, and we think that, you know, we could be one of the favorites here. And, uh, and if they're going to continue to play like this, then, yeah, absolutely. And they will most likely be moving on unless some sort of crazy comeback here happens from West Point. And that point is good. So 8 to 1 is our score so far. Nine minutes, one second remains. And uh, Knights, they keep this up, and they could try to set a record for how many points have been scored on a team in this event. Man, this reminds me of uh, FGCU last year playing just about everybody. Yeah. Winning games 13 to 1, 14 to 1, you know, just game after game after game. You know, UCF, you know, they, I mean, they've played two, two of their games that we've watched them smack people around have both been against West Point. Yeah. You know, so. You know, we're going to take a quick little break here. We'll be right back. Back here, 26 seconds before the start of this next point, 9-1 to go. And uh, really not much to talk about on West Point's side other than the fact that playing some good games of catch out there. And uh, on the flip side, though, Central Florida looking like a favorite here. During the break, Todd and I were talking about who we thought was the favorite in this event. You know, there's some good teams. Uh, Temple looked pretty solid. Florida Atlantic also looked pretty good as they won their quarterfinal games against strong teams. But right now, Central Florida definitely Bravo, sending a statement for sure. Bravo, baby. Yeah, and, and UCF, for the first time, gets the grenade thrown at them, losing three bodies on the Dorito side right away. Daughtry still alive, though, in snake one, and he just got gunned up on that D side. I don't think they knew he got in there. And he does have some protection down the wire. So there's Daughtry, and he's trying to get a shot on that D side of the field. And he, he chews one up. So that's going to slow things down a little bit here. He does have protection down the wire. Um, but then that player gets shot. So now it's Daughtry. Daughtry gets another one. Oh, and then Daughtry is going to have to get a little creative in here. And he's going to move up. 
They do not know that he's moved out, and he's going to chew one up. He gets another one, but then he drops the ball on the other one, and I think he gets finally gets taken out. So I thought Daughtry was about to pull a four on one off, but he did not see the last player left alive. Thought he might have got all of them, but hey, man, he was wheeling and dealing in there. Yeah, I mean, if he had just pulled all that off, yeah, then Army should have just thrown their guns on the field yeah. and left. You know, it was it was Daughtry and Waltz. You know, Waltz got shot out of that snake's like corner, and then Daughtry, you know, just snuck into that 50 real quick. You know, as you can see, all the paint running, but flying by him on his way. You, know, you see that slow mo paint stream come in, but he dives right through it, gets all the way to the snake. Yeah. Here's when Daughtry comes in. He actually had a shot on the guy that shot him right there, and then missed it. Then picked up the flag runner. And then that player that he just missed came and shot him. Greg Waltz, actually, you know, he's been playing good out here for UCF as well. Um, right before halftime, he's actually the player. I made a mistake. He's actually the one that ran down the highway on that Dorito side and bunked out two players from Army. Did you see Daughtry put that kid in the ground? Yeah, that hurts. Yeah. You know, and that's the walking off slow in super slow motion with my head down, dejected look of Army right now. You know, after watching so much paintball over these years, you really don't even have to talk to the players to know what's going on in their heads. Their body language will tell you all. It's going to tell you how confident they are. It's going to tell you if they're mentally prepared to play the game. It's definitely going to tell you whether or not they want to move out of their bunkers. And uh, and then after the point or when they get shot walking off, because some guys get shot walking off, they totally forget about it right away. They're like, okay, well, made a little mistake there. I'm going to get it back. And then some guys take it a little bit more to heart. So. You know, right now, uh, the West Point did score a point here. So we have eight minutes left to play in this game, and Central Florida uh, is now up six points. But they've just been completely dominating. And even that one, Daughtry almost pulled that point off. But they, you, only, you only need one left alive to hang the flag. And uh, luckily for West Point, they did have somebody alive to hang that flag and score one here. So two to eight is the score. Six seconds to go before the start of this next point. Actually, three bodies coming off. Three bodies coming out right now. And then taking advantage of that by getting into the 50 snake. Wells probably just going to stand right over the top. Oh, get toward the pits. But not enough as he came around. Wells got blown to bits. Central Florida Paintball is putting on a clinic right now. So they're going to run that flag in. Or no, he's going to go run to the shade and then hide and wait for West Point to concede the point. They burn a little time off this clock here. Yeah, you know, West Point should take this extra time to regroup. You know, try and get it together. If I'm West Point, I'm doing everything that I haven't done up to this point. We've just been going three hard to the Dorito side. I'm going Sending three hard. Four snake side. Four snake side. <laughs> you know? We actually tried that at practice. Did you really? Yeah, a couple times. Yeah, absolutely. How'd it work? It, successfully. Really? I don't think I ran it uh, at the Dallas event, but I mean, we tried it a couple times. You know, just guns up everywhere, you know, running and gunning. You know, guy up the middle, well, couple running, bodies coming out this way. Running and gunning is, is what worked for you guys at Dallas. Yeah. That's really what took Vicious. And that's one of, you know, Vicious is one of the best stories in paintball right now because of their second place finish at Dallas. They're going to be playing at the Mid Atlantic Open, May 2nd through the 4th. And, uh, but the, the lesson to take from those practices and how it pertains to this particular field right now, it's the same layout. Running and gunning is what got you guys that far, and you, develop, you, you figured that out in a practice where nothing else was working, where you're playing your standard regular paintball out here, and you're like, that's it, everyone's running and shooting their bunkers. We're going to play wild style in your face paintball, and lo and behold, it started working. Yeah, so we got to the event and we were like, hey, you guys want to do that? Yeah, let's do that. It was fun. Yeah. So with just 40 seconds to go here before the start of the next one, uh, Central Florida Knights 9, West Point 2. Good learning experience for West Point, though, Todd, coming out to this tournament. They, at least they got this far. You know, West Point able to make it to the quarterfinals. They played some good teams. And, uh, you know, they'll be back. West Point's played in a lot of uh, NCPA tournaments over, this, over the years. And, um, and, you know, slowly but surely getting better at the sport. Slowly but surely improving their paintball skills. So we will see them next year. Ten seconds! Here we go, getting ready to dig out. Five, two, 
So can Florida continue to shoot West Point off the break or can West Point get those guns up? So Todd, here they go, five guns up for West Point. This is gonna work out for them though. Were they able to get any shots on Central Florida? Doesn't look like they are. Five players alive for Central Florida, but I think five players alive for West Point as well too. Yeah, uh, Wells took a big bite over there on the Dorito side coming up to that top temple and dipping across that inset Dorito. And as it looks across the field, Army tries to counter by coming up the middle, but gets chewed up. Not sure by who, here comes Daughtry diving from the temple into the snake one. Now he's gonna look across the field uh, as UCF loses a body out of that snake side corner. Army comes attacking down the Dorito side. They get another body that's Wells getting shot in the face. He comes walking off, but standing in the 50 Dorito is Army right now, but here comes Daughtry. He's having none of that. Delta, Delta, uh, I think Dosh might have traded out, but he didn't shoot his gun. And I think there still is, though, massive attack by uh, West Point. Got countered by Daughtry on the snake side, got chewed up on the D side. So it looked like maybe one player left alive for West Point. Yes, so West Point has one player left alive in the back corner bunker after all that chaotic plays and uh, gonna hang it up for another point here. Three to nine will be the score. Ate a little bit of time off, off that clock. Five minutes and 49 seconds will remain here in this match. And there's this counter punch paintball by Daughtry. West Point had made it into the snake. And he was like, nope, sorry, it's my snake. But as he was calling for a check, he did get shot cross field. So, uh, and then the back corner bunker still alive for West Point as they were able to hang it up. We'll be right back after a few words from our sponsors. The Empire Battle-Tested Defender comes with magnesium shell for high strength and lightweight, an angled foregrip, an axe-based firing engine, quick and toolless maintenance, an Apex 2 and standard barrel with Super Freak inserts, auto anti-jam, and includes both quick feed and magnetic flip lids. More information about this marker is available on the product page at EmpirePaintball.com. Five minutes and 49 seconds to go here in the second half of this matchup between University of Central Florida Knights and the West Point Black Knights. Nine to three, uh, six points separates these two teams, but to be honest, the game really hasn't even been that close. West Point's been able to put two points on the board here, um, but they don't have very much time left. Six points in six minutes with the, the aggression and gun power that uh, Central Florida has been able to bring to bear, it, it's gonna be really tough for them. So now West Point's freaking all the way out, back corner bunker on the D side of the field. It looks like Central Florida now losing a body in the center. Still four players left alive for them. Here comes the aggressive move up to the center 50. He goes right past that and ends up, kinda got shot by his own guy. He looked kinda back after he got shot. But uh, I like the try, it didn't work out though. And now pushing into the snake. But West Point's already in the snake. So here comes the attack. Oh, and then that player gets his uh, hair mohawked. And he's going to take the walk. I think that's Wells right here on the snake side. Oh, sorry, Zachary yeah, Cook. So, yeah, Zach Cook got scalped. And uh, it looks like Gorick's still alive here. So slowly but surely, methodically putting some points on the board here for West Point. And now we're going to have a five-point game with about five minutes to play. So if West Point can continue to score a point a minute, a um, little under that, then they could potentially tie it up here and take it into sudden death. I mean, it, you know, you gotta think at some point though, Todd, Central Florida's gonna be like, all right, let's put a stop to this, put our five starters in there and go run a racket on these guys. Yeah, and that was Cook right there, you know, in the slow-mo walkout replay. But then again, you know, you talk about having depth at a paintball tournament. You know, sometimes your five starters, you put those guys out there and they're just not getting it done, you know, in any sport. 
you know, that's why you have reserves. That's why you have guys uh, that you can throw in there uh, when your starters aren't getting the job done. This is the time where you get your reserves some reps so that they can feel comfortable. So if you go into tomorrow's competition and any of your starters gets hurt or one of them's not getting the job done, you can put in a reserve player so that he can get in there and get the job done and feel comfortable with what he's doing on this field layout. You want to have a high level of talent across the board so that your team can be consistent. Yeah, good breakdown. That's yeah, Depth is important. So we'll be right back after this quick commercial message. Here we go, 10 seconds to go before the start of this next point. A little under five minutes to play. West Point has been, they've been doing pretty well these past couple ones. Uh, but, you know, can they keep it rolling? We'll see. So on the breakout, Daughtry uh, uh, back in for uh, Central Florida. And he runs the bunker right behind the snake. Five players alive for Central Florida. And it looks like five are alive for West Point as well. Army, here they come, crawling up on the snake. You can see their Dorito line for uh, Central Florida. Good cross field spread. You know, try to maintain that lead, not making it no risks. Just get in your spots, roll the guns, carry some extra paint out there. Now that does allow West Point to get to the 50 snake and wrap around, and those guys got to deal with that. Man, time and time again, we keep seeing this. Uh, uh, to me, the coach is right there. The coach has got to tell, uh, tell Daughtry uh, that, hey, 50's hot, yell across the field, so those guys can tuck their packs in. But right now in here, West Point just feasting in this 50 snake. Yeah, communication errors can cost you one, two, three bodies, as it just did for UCF as Army now has control of the 50 snake and two bodies over there. Oh, and UCF loses their last body, so just two bodies left alive as the Dorito side corner comes walking off. I believe it is a two on three in favor of Army, and here comes Army trying to run down Daughtry. That was a big fight, man. Yeah, you gotta play that a little bit smarter. Army goes shuffling into the 50 Dorito. Let's see if he made it in there alive. Looks like he did. Now Daughtry gonna take that opportunity to dive into the snake. See if he can get a shot on the 50 Dorito. And the 50 Dorito, I think he might have got, no, nope, he's still in there. So there's the uh, snake side corner for Army on your screen. That's Daughtry. Daughtry, his coach, has got his teammate on the inside of him. Looks like Army loses a body though, off the D side of the field, he's taking the walk. They still have a body over here. Uh, the far bunker here, back bunker on the snake side, and then you're watching Central Florida push up in that center of the field, trying to get a shot on that back bunker in the gray zone. Now you're looking at that guy in the gray bunker, and he's, that's the back bunker on the snake side, and you know, he's he's gotta push forward. West Point doesn't even have, or, uh, the Central Florida, they don't have to push forward, so now they, they realize, West Point realizes, all right, well, we're just gonna concede the point here, um, which was, Two minutes and 37 seconds left, a six point spread. Yeah, not a chance. Um, but they're just trying to preserve that time so they can you know, try a comeback. But they're really gonna have to do nothing but just run quick stunts, quick plays, two up the center, 50 snake off the break. And we're looking over the shoulder there, uh, doing some work for Central Florida. And then searching for his next kill, so. I don't know, I think we could see possibly, depends on the break. If, uh, you know, the Knights, you're not gonna really watch them go anywhere, probably, um, you know, keep their energy. Well, or they could try to run the score up and try to send a statement. There really is no, you know, I was asked yesterday, Todd, if there's some sort of etiquette in, in, uh, in college paintball as far as running the score up. And I was like, yeah, not, not really. You know, there's not really an etiquette. It's more like, yeah, we wanna put the most points up as possible, unless you wanna slow the game down, let the time run out, so kinda of preserve your energy. Anyway, we'll be right back after this.
We're back here, 12 seconds to go before the start of this point. And the Knights with the dominant lead over West Point here. So let's see how crazy this gets because the only, I mean, there's really no possible way they can come back. I mean, almost put a million bucks on it. Uh, because Central Florida has been so dominant. And West Point really, like I said, they're gonna have to attack with strict law of the style, but I didn't see that here. Uh, what I do see is three bodies walking off of the Knights, uh, the Black Knights. So Central Florida on the flip side though, they, they lost two, but pushing two guys fast and aggressive here down the stake side of the field. Yeah. Army dropping bodies once again, just getting chopped up all over the place. Cook over here in the snake, he's gonna jump over and go on the feastable. Nice Have move. A little feasting time. Yeah, nice move, feasting up that center, Todd. With his feasting friends. Oof. Looking good. He's at the buffet, chalking up some steaks, putting two plates in each arm, just loading up. Wells. It's like, Wells, don't worry, man, I got it. You just chill out in the 50 snake. Well, Central Florida looking real strong. Tons of uh, tons of stars for them right now. A lot of production from their whole crew. Ooh, gets a little chicken wing going on there for Keith. And he's gonna walk off frustrated. Yeah. See, there's that, that's that frustrated walk I was talking about. That one wasn't that bad, though. But, um, you know, I'd be frustrated too. But they gotta keep their wits about them. You know, look, man, West Point, they're getting a lot better. I've been watching West Point play for five years now, I think. I can't remember when they came into the NCPA. It's been a while, but uh, you know, they've p slowly but surely got better and better and better, and they did make it to the quarterfinals. So, and they're just going to run the clock off as Odell. I think that's Odell, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Brad Odell, he's just, uh, you know, copping a squat there in the center of the field, relaxing, and then he's gonna go hang it up. Yeah, they're gonna say hang it at five, because if you hang it at five, uh, then there doesn't have to be another point and the beating will stop. <laughs> make the bad man stop. Wait for two seconds and make him walk back up. <laughs> but hey, valid, valid effort from West Point though, Todd, like I was saying. Yeah. I, I really am proud of them that they got this far. Uh, because, you know, who knows, next year maybe they can train up a little bit, maybe pick up a new, some new guys. Well, you know what else I like? I like the fact that, you know, of all the colleges, you know, that in the world or in the U.S. here <laughs> that are available to come play these events. Uh, you know, Army always comes and represents. Air Force represents. Navy represents. You know, it's nice that, uh, you know, all these uh, teams come out year after year and uh, are able to come out here and put a team in, you know, participate in the NCPA. Well, and it's cool, too, because, you know, paintball has a huge following within the military. And, uh, you know, we get, I get, a lot of people hitting us up and <clears throat> on Facebook and different social media saying, hey, we're watching from just insert random place around the world here. Yeah. And it's always so great to hear from those guys. And you know, thank you very much for doing their work. So congratulations to uh, University of Central Florida Knights as they put a solid beating on West Point. But hey, man, West Point, they still, they hung in there and they're getting better year after year. Don't worry, we got one more match coming at you. It's gonna be a good one. Fresno State Bulldogs, they're taking on the Yukon Huskies. I'm Matty Marshall with Todd Martinez here. 2014 NCPA Championships, we'll be right back.